I'm currently folding some towels and laundry stuff, but I decided why not record a quick top 23 of 2023 video as well as putting in my stuff for the top 22 of 2022 because I made a video for that. Funny enough, I was wearing this exact jacket in that video. Um, so I don't know. I could insert those clips too in here, but I think it's just easier to just do it all again in this one video that I plan to actually record and get out there. So I think I'm going to start with 2022. Um, okay, so to start off, for 2022, my top songs were Sex Sells by Lovejoy, You Ruin Nirvana by McKenna Grace, Boys Will Be Bugs by Cape Town, The Kids Are All Dying by Phineas, and Don't You Forget About Me by Simple Minds. So for books, there's... And for all of these, it's in no particular order. It's just mostly in order of how I could think about them. So the first one is Jack and Louisa, Act 1 through 3, like the whole trilogy by Andrew Keenan Bulger. Blame for the Wind by Robbie Coach. Um, Suicide Notes by Michael Thomas Ford. The Love Curse of Melody McIntyre. Did not put the author down. And then the Percy Jackson books 1 through 3 by Rick Riordan. Top 5 shows. The Owl House. Heartstopper, Gronish, Dead End Paranormal Park, and Saved by the Bell. For movies, The Breakfast Club, Better Nate Than Ever, Turning Red, John Tucker Must Die, and Gremlins. And then for the last two entries for 2022 would be Artist, and again, since it's 22, there's only two of them, and it was Conan Gray and McKenna Grace. Okay, now on to this year. Okay, so... For my top 23 of 2023, starting with songs, the first one is Bittersweet 16 by McKenna Grace. I love McKenna Grace as an actress and an artist, and Bittersweet 16, the whole EP itself is great. That's just, um, I'd say a standout song from it for me. It was also number two on my Spotify wrapped, so I guess I listened to it a decent amount of times, but it's really good. Her music is... Like, her songwriting is beautiful, it's relatable, and her, it's just good. If you haven't listened to McKenna Grace, go check her out. Next is Sleep by the Smiths, which, um, of course, is an older song, and how I got into it, I'll get into it later. Next is Call Me What You Like by Lovejoy. It was a single they released during this, not this, last year. Um, that's also on their newest EP. Ooh. Wake Up and It's Over. Wake Up and It's Over. I was thinking of, like, the acronym for it. I could not remember the words. But for their EP, Wake Up and It's Over. And I love it. I love Love Joy. Next is Shark in the Water by V.V. Brown, which the reasoning I can get into now. Because I really got into the grassy last year and that was one of its most iconic promos it was that song was in one of its most iconic promos and after watching that promo and hearing the song i'm like ooh, i like this because it has a nostalgic sound I probably heard it a few times when i was younger i can't remember it but like it sounds really familiar so it's i liked it um next is hidden in the sand by tally hall i don't know where I first heard the song, probably in this video, I think, a short where it's like songs that sound like the DSMP character, like not characters, but like people's voices. That one I really liked. I even made this short, cute little, well, I say cute because I made it and I like to think it's cute. I might post it, this little video thing with the audio. Um, definitely the thought was better than the execution but still it was fun now for books so first we have solitaire by alice osman and on this list is also radio silence by alice osman because this last year i keep thinking it's 2023 it's not <laughs> last year i read all of her books and i really love her work solitaire i i love tori spring i like getting to look at her story um, I have the book 
I have the cover. I'm not gonna grab it right now. The actual book my friend's borrowing right now, but I love it. It's just such, I don't know, being in the head of Tori Spring is just a really developed character, and it was the first novel in this Heartstopper universe Alice Within wrote, so it's kind of nice to see where it all like expanded from. And then Radio Silence is another beautiful story that covers... It follows very interesting characters that you don't really get to see inside the main Heartstopper universe. These books definitely, like I would love to see these books adapted, but I think they might be better off not adapted. Solitaire has space to be adapted because it kind of falls into the timeline of Heartstopper, but I don't know, there's really good books. I can't even explain how good they are, how cool the story is and just, the magic of Osmond's universe. Um, we have two memoirs on this list. I'm Glad My Mom Died by Janette McCurdy. I read it this summer and it was a great read. It's a nice insight into her, her life and just everything she went through during her childhood. It kind of goes into why she's not really acting anymore and how that was never something she truly wanted to do. And it's like, it's a cautionary tale for children in the entertainment industry and things like that. It's, but I think it's always interesting to kind of see the trajectory of these child stars and everything they went through and how that affected their lives. Next memoir, Girl Interrupted by Susanna Kaysen. I think I said that right. It, this book was also adapted into a film in 1999 starring Winona Ryder and Angelina Jolie. And I honestly did not know it was a memoir until the very end. I thought it was a fictional novel, um, which is really funny. But it's a good read. It's honestly just very interesting, kind of in relation to mental health in the 60s. But it seems like something that would have been more stigmatized during that time period. So it's really cool to see. Er, I keep using the word cool, but it's interesting to kind of see that insider's view on what's happening. Next, we have shows. So Degrassi is one of the ones I've watched, as I already talked about. I love the show. I think it's honestly one of the best teen series, coming of age series to ever be made because it really delves into so many issues that teens may face in everyday life. And I feel like it's very grounded. It doesn't feel too over-exaggerated. The characters feel relatable. Any character you you dislike, you just like them because they're real. And it's just, you don't like everyone. It's not like a badly written character. It's just some people in life you don't like. Some people's personalities are just off-putting. And that's real. It's the kind of drama that happens is just... I think once it went over to Nickelodeon, it got a little more wild in content but especially like in the early 2000s once it started the storylines the topics and just the characters were just relatable and we're sending a really great message to children story-wise and then next heartstopper of course already kind of touched on that love alice Wilson's work love the universe and it was also one of my ones last year or the year before that. Great show. Next, Percy Jackson, The Olympians. Also, although only three episodes are out, and literally two of them, only two of them were out last year. Um, it's still a great show. Love the books. And this adaption is just a million times better than the movies. I think just because age-wise, it feels more book appropriate. The cast seems so lively. I'm going to make a sit down with Sam episode about Percy Jackson, so I'll get into all of that then. Next is Community. Um, I watched it this year. I think I might have started, in, or when I say this year, you know what I mean. I might have started it in 2022, but I don't know. I love Community. It's really funny. Classic sitcom. Love Troy and Abed. What more can I say? Next is Gordimer Gibbons Life on Normal Street, which is an Amazon Prime original series that I watched when I was younger and I really like I really love it. My favorite thing about it is it feels like watching a storybook if that makes any sense. Just the cinematography, the soundtrack, and the storylines. Like for a while I was so sure it was adapted off a book series, but it's not. It's also just the episode episode titles, content, and the way it's structured feels like 
book. And I really like that, especially with like book adaptions that feel true to the things itself. I really love that. Speaking of books, I totally missed the book. <laughs> um, one of the books I that's on my list is The Perks of Being a Wallflower. I read it this year and I loved it so much. That's where I got to sleep by the Smiths. I even made a whole playlist featuring all the songs listed in the book. And to transition perfectly into movies, that's the first one I have on my movies list for my top five. And that's The Perks of Being a Wallflower. I rented it on DVD after I watched, I read the book to kind of do that comparison. And it felt like a very faithful adaptation. And I, it still felt like, I would say early 2000s, like a feature film, but I don't know. It just, it did really well to stay true to the book and delivered the same message, the same feeling of it. I don't know. I really love the story. It's a touching story, beautiful moments. Like, I feel like reading it and watching it, you do feel infinite. The other movies, we have some three films that came out on the big screen. And that would be Planets of Freddy's, because I love the game, love the franchise. So as a fan, it was so cool to see this come to life, because I've been following this movie for a while now. And then it finally came out, and already working on the second one. Next is Barbie, because as a doll lover, um... That was also cool to see. I love Margot Robbie as well. I love Greta Gerwig. So there's what's not to love about the movie. And I absolutely love the production design of this movie because, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Costume design, production design, the writing, and then the soundtrack. I'm just Ken will forever be ingrained in my brain. And then lastly, Wonka. I watched it. That's like end of the year. I watched it like two weeks ago. It was great. Timothy Chalamet did amazing and it was just so whimsical and magical. I also love the production design for that. The acting, the story. It just had that proper amount of whimsy that you would expect from a Willy Wonka film. And then the other movie I have is Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. I watched it during Thanksgiving break and I, I love it. It's so good. Really funny. I like how it does feel like a comic book. Like it's just really silly, bright, and I love this song, Black Sheep. It's not there, but you can consider it one of my top songs for the year. And now for the last category, artist. And it's pretty much the same as last, not even pretty much. Um, first you have Conan Gray, McKenna Grace, and then Lovejoy. Conan Gray, um, I just absolutely love his music. Um, did Super 8 come out? last year was that 20 no that was 2022 so he has not released an album yet but one is coming up and he released three singles in 2023 and they were all great there's not much to expand on there those are just my top artists and that is my top 23 of 2023 so don't forget to like subscribe hit the bell for notifications and comment down below what your top 23 are bye